For day 15 homework, we're looking at ionotropic and metabotropic receptors, which may be excitatory or inhibitory. We're also looking at divergence, facilitation, inhibition, of course, and a little bit of brain organization. <clears throat> First, events at a synapse that uses an ionotropic neurotransmitter receptor. So we start with the presynaptic neuron. As the action potential is occurring, we're opening voltage-gated sodium channels here. So the action potential is reaching the end of the axon, the axon terminal. Positive charge comes in, repelling nearby positive charge. That opens voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium enters. Calcium binds to a calcium binding protein. It's called synaptotagmin, but we aren't going to be concerned about the name here, which is actually a complex of proteins that are part of the membrane and also attached to the vesicle of a neurotransmitter. So here's our neurotransmitter. That causes fusion of the membrane of the neurotransmitter vesicle, and we release neurotransmitter. In the postsynaptic cell, there are receptors that bind to the neurotransmitter. <clears throat> and in this case, in ionotropic receptors, they're called ionotropic because the receptor is an ion channel. So here is our receptor. It's this whole thing. And in this case, sodium, if it's excitatory, um, sodium comes in. So we wanted our postsynaptic cell to be excitatory. Here's the postsynaptic cell. <coughs> and that makes it more likely that we're going to open voltage-gated sodium channels in the new cell. Sodium comes in and can start a new action potential. That was the first one. How would we make it inhibitory? If it was inhibitory, then we would have our postsynaptic ionotropic receptor would either be a potassium channel, potassium would leave, making the inside more negative, and that makes an action potential less likely, tends to hold, tends to attract this voltage gate in, and it would make it harder to get to the threshold of minus 45, and so it would be harder to get a new action potential. Um, and of course, in a typical neuron, the voltage-gated action potentials wouldn't be here where I've drawn them. They would be way off at the axon hillock. Um, so this, in the case of um, a potassium channel, this negative charge would simply disperse, spread out as it goes, and some of it would reach the axon hillock. We could instead have made our receptor be a chloride channel. And in most, but not quite all cells, chloride the equilibrium for chloride is such that it enters, again, it'll make the cell more negative. <clears throat>